But you ain't down, but you ain't down for me You been switching like the weather I don't like to tell nobody ever, never But we ain't never getting back together You ain't getting back, no, no You ain't getting back with me You make it rain when it's sunny When I get the fame, you get nothing When I finally glow up and blow up and leave this behind me I hope that you know you ain't finna be cuffing I'm tired of being alone I'm tired of waking up and being on my own, on my own now Scooty. Why'd you fuck with me Yo. and that like we was check, 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 why can I hear myself? Why'd you tell me that you love me Should if you love yo, me? Yo, 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 yo Why'd you fuck with me I know, it's just like really quiet, there we go Why'd you tell me wow. that you love me It's been a minute yeah. New yeah. podcast drop date yeah. Tuesdays now, baby, Tuesdays Yeah, it feels a little bit better this way for those of you that didn't get the announcement, the notification, we are dropping the pod on Tuesdays now as opposed to Fridays. Already can tell it's going to be way better as far as content and timing in the week when this shit drops. One of the one of the biggest factors for us on on the date change was just, and we've talked about it before, but I think podcasts are very, you know, work week, school week, um, commute type listening um and it's not like a weekend thing you yeah. know you drop a, you drop them a, a song on friday and people play it all weekend and shit like that you drop a podcast people like to listen to that just you know throughout the throughout the work week grind so we'd rather do that at the beginning of the week than the end also just as far as like music dropping on fridays i personally don't like hearing because i listen to podcasts and things like that so i don't like hearing everyone else's take on things and then at the end of the week giving mine i'd rather have like a fresh yeah fresh uh plate for myself to digest stuff and regurgitate my opinion so right yeah i I like it word the last uh the last pot we did was actually the day of the lansing show we did mm-hmm. so even though that feels like a long time ago we haven't even said anything on the pot about it but shout out everyone that came through that was a really fun show um shout out marcus apollo uh tone and sway and Dion and everybody that helped put the show together. Um, it was really fun. Yeah, it was good. Fans never never cease to amaze me. A lot of people traveling. Um, and the thing that's crazy, too, is I'll ask people when I talk to them after the shows, you know, I had couple, somebody from Kentucky, somebody, somebody from um, Iowa. There was a group from, like, northern Wisconsin, um, which is a hike. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them were driving home that night. Yeah, which is insane. So it's like they just come to town on a Friday, go to the show, and go home. Like that shit's that shit's nuts to me. So and I always feel like there's not enough I can do to show appreciation for those people because that's really fucking cool. Um, but yeah, just definitely want to shout everyone out. I hope everyone had a good time. It seemed like everyone did. Um, we got to do the whole meet and greet line, so nobody. We didn't miss anybody, and uh, yeah, I, I know all the all the guys had a good time. Um, all the guys that performed, and it was yep. good, it was good shit. Always yeah. always a good time at the loft. We haven't had we haven't really missed on one of those recently. No, no. Um, yeah, it was it was a good time. The only the only problem I had with it is the technical difficulties we were having. All oh, night. I didn't tell you. Yeah, so for those of you that weren't there, and even for those of you that were, you might not have even noticed because it's just kind of some things that you really only notice. When you're putting on this, I show. feel like if you've been to a show before, you might have noticed yeah. it at the loft. I'm saying because yeah, it, it was pretty same. noticeable to me when I went up. Yeah, so without number, anybody even telling me, I was yeah. like, "What the hell is going on?" So number one, the lights weren't working. Right. Um, as in, it wasn't like it was just dark. The you could turn them on and off as far as just like the basic lights. You can make it pitch black and then you could turn on the lights. Yeah, but there was absolutely no light show. There was nothing you could do right. with the lights. Um because and I, I didn't tell you, but I I was I saw uh Scotty out the other day. Yeah. And he told me he was like one of the lights in the sequence was actually broken, so it wasn't user error. There was an issue with the lights and they they had to fix it. Wow. <clears throat> so that was just kind of shitty luck. Right. Um and then, yeah, the the sound guy. <laughs> I did about the the longest sound check I've ever done, uh, and this is what sucks. So like, we you know we talk all the time about our our come up in music, and 
um, being a local act and, and doing all these, all this grind work. And when we were always opening for shows and we were the first act on or the second act on opening for bigger names here locally, you always got shit on from a sound check perspective, from a show perspective, you were just a peon. Like you didn't get a sound check. You didn't, whatever, nobody respected you, whatever. So, and we always hated it because right. we treated ourselves professionally. We wanted to put on a good show. We, we expect people to come out and pay tickets to see us perform. We don't want our performance to suck because no one wanted to give us 10 minutes to check our sound. Right. Um, so now that we're putting on shows, we want to make sure artists that open for us don't get treated like right. that. Get a legitimate sound check. Right. So a lot of times sound guys show up late, whatever. And a lot of, a lot of times it's because they know they can do their job in X amount of time, right? Mm. But we wanted them to get there early because we want to check everybody. So which that a lot of that money comes out of our pocket. Right. For the sound guy to get there early. Right. So he gets there early. He was on time. We're thinking this is going to be good. It's a guy we'd never met before. <sighs> and he just couldn't couldn't get my shit tight it was like i'm getting feedback all over the stage and i'm a pretty i'm normally a pretty easy artist to work with at sound checks i don't do anything too crazy just the basic we just had a drummer and a dj um i just want to make sure i can hear myself in the monitors mo makes sure we sound good in the house like it's not that crazy make sure there's no feedback and this guy just couldn't get it right and every time i would say something we've never taken more than 15 minutes out of sound right never and this one took about 45. 45. And when it was, the only reason it stopped at 45. Because we just gave up. Was because I was like, well, fuck <laughs> it. You know, this isn't go getting anywhere. But it, he was getting super defensive and everything too. Like, I'm I'm like, I just want to get this shit right, bro. Like, he's, right. he's trying to talk about, like, Mo and I own our own wireless mic that we use all the time. Used it Literally for every a show. A million shows. And he's trying to blame the mic and stuff. And I was like, bro. Dude, we've take, taken this mic to so many venues <laughs> yeah. and never had a problem with it that you can't blame yeah. it on the mic. He literally said this old ass mic. And that was when I hit my point. And I was like, bro. <laughs> okay. I normally don't want to piss the sound guy off because he's making my shit sound tight. But no, I'm not going to sit here while you just blame other shit other than yourself. I think the biggest thing was like communication was terrible. Like, yeah, I, he I just kept dude, saying that he was going to get it right, that yeah. he's trying to get it right. And I'm just like, dude, at some point, we need to come to a conclusion on what we want to do here because exactly. obviously nothing's working right now. So yeah. we need to just figure it out and you need to tell us yeah, so normally what I, we need to do. We're kind of you know performing our songs on stage and telling him, hey, do this, do this. Give me a little more vocals on stage. Give me a little more music, wh whatever. Right. And he's making these adjustments and we're testing it out and you hit a point and you're like, okay, sounds good. We're right. done. Right. Well, anytime I would say something to this guy, it was like, oh, I know I'm, I'm working on it and I'm trying to get. And so basically I ended up just, and he said that multiple times. So I ended up just basically performing my, my whole damn set yeah. on stage while he just tried to fix basic problems. Right. right. We didn't even get to like specific, oh, I need. I need this a little more, this no. a little more. It was just like, bro, get rid of the feedback. Right. <laughs> Let me be able to walk around stage. But to his credit, the actual show itself, by the t at least by the time I got on stage, he had figured it out pretty well. Pretty, pretty decently well. Like, well, yeah. It went better than I expected it to go when I was waiting in the green room. Right. But yeah, that was that was an experience. But Yeah, for people that aren't familiar with live shows too, like hip-hop shows are one of the easiest shows to engineer. So... The fact that he couldn't get a sound check like that right just Yeah, there's means no full like, band. There's not changing over bands right. and equipment. Like, it's just mics. We, right. had, we had a drummer. Nobody else even had a drummer. Right. And, there's and there's nothing special with hip-hop shows. Like it's, it's pretty basic. Well, and that's why this guy was kind of annoying, too, because I guess somebody, one of the openers, overheard him kind of mumbling under his breath, like, they don't pay me enough for this shit. Like, what shit, bro? You not being able to do your job? Right. You doing the easiest show that you'll probably ever do. Yeah. Like imagine if we were a rock band and had three bands That's what opening I'm, up for us. Like I, I what would you do? Yeah, what would you do? <clears throat> if you were a national act coming in and yeah, like had a full band had a full band some other like light show or other like, engineers, stuff like that. Yeah. It, it would have been a mess. Oh my God, bro. Uh, it would have been terrible. Yeah. We had to push doors back as it was a little bit, like fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, yeah. We probably should have done more, but Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, it was a good show. He figured it out, so I yeah, was happy I mean, with yeah. That. We're, the we're only thing about- I was really bummed about was the lights because it did look very basic. Yeah. Luckily, we had our visuals in the back of you, so right. it helped a little bit. But for the openers, I felt kind of bad for because yeah, there was just nothing yeah. happening during their set. Yeah. It was pretty pretty basic. Oh, um, speaking of shows, Marcus is um, perf- he's opening for some other people uh, in GR next Wednesday. Um, so like a week from tomorrow, October 24th. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to be there. Um, I think I'm going to do hype beast with them actually. Word. Um, so that'll be fun. Anyone that's in the GR area, come check that out. I think he's going to go on pretty early. He might be the very first person to perform. So if you're going to go check him out, make sure you get there early. Yep. Um, what else happened this weekend? Oh, big, big MSU football victory. Yeah. I was, I was getting close to. To giving up on them this year. And then they go and beat a top 10 team on the road. Yeah, Penn State played like garbage, though. D'Antonio doesn't get enough respect as an amazing coach. No, he is an amazing coach. People don't name him with, you know, top coaches. Even in the Big Ten, they they always go to Harbaugh and and, um, Urban Meyer. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times with their recent success, people go to uh, James James Franklin for Penn State before they even get to D'Antonio. And then they get to D'Antonio and they pronounce his name wrong. But he's been a beast, man. And he's done a lot with a lot less than some of those other coaches. Right. <clears throat> but, yeah, big win. Big game this upcoming weekend. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm nervous. <laughs> I wish they wouldn't have won this last weekend because then I could have just been like, ah. ah. I'm kind of happy they did as far as our game against them goes because we can ruin their season. It's, but the thing is, it's exciting now again for me. And now I feel like it's like a legitimate, now. like, yeah, before it was like, if before we, it's like, oh, you're saying if we would have lost. Yeah. Uh, if we would have <laughs> lost. Yeah. 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 It would have just been like a huge upset. But now it's like, no, we could, we could actually win. Right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, dude, you can't not like our chances based off recent history. I mean, Michigan waxed Wisconsin. So yeah, but Wisconsin, they never have to play anyone in that side of but the But they demolished them. I know. Them. I know. But they also, you know, they barely beat Northwestern. They, which Northwestern beat us, but, right? I mean, <laughs> but still, like I could, I could see Penn State beating Michigan, and we beat Penn State. So we'll see. I, I don't, we'll I don't see. think Michigan's like a scary team. No. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. Like, I, like I, when we play Ohio State, I'll be scared. I don't think Michigan's scary. We'll see. We'll see. It's gonna be. Oh, I hate. I mean, I don't really haven't experienced it in a while, but it, when we lose to them in football, it's like, ugh, because their fan base is just so poopy. Yeah. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I, I still like our chances. D'Antonio, greater than Harbaugh. Yes. <clears throat> All right, let's get into the topics of the day, huh? The the biggest topic, at least... Wait, wait, what do you think about this? Because this is a good transition from okay. uh, from college football. Tom Brady says NFL is glorified college football. I don't even get what that means. This it's becoming glorified college football. What's he referring to? I think it it was a different time, meaning when he was on the bench. They asked him what his year on the bench meant to him as developing into the quarterback that he is now. Mm-hmm. And he said, I think it was a different time. Football was different then. Now, in many ways, pro football is more glorified college football. In some ways, the transition, it's more similar than it used to be when I first started. Football now is removing some of the physical elements of the game. It's more of a space game. You see a lot of college plays more in the pro game now than I remember when I started. Mm, I can see that. I can see that, too. But I think it is becoming more and more uh, because it's not it's not. They're removing a lot of the physical elements, so it's more skill-based. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think, A, players are more skilled in general, so it's becoming more skill-based because you build around your talent. So when you got just freaks of nature out there... Yeah, like, but I think, I think it's also... Like, if you got a guy that's just a freak athlete, you naturally want to get him in space as opposed to have him around a group of other guys. Agreed. But, but I also think that goes hand-in-hand hand in hand with the rule changes like right it's the same thing in basketball where it's a lot you can you can pull off a lot more when you can't hand check a guy right Mm -hmm. on defense but if if you're allowed to hand check and use your hands when you play defense all the time well you're not going to see as many spectacular offensive plays right which 
fans don't like. Right. As much as fans will claim, but even um, I think viewership is up this year in the NFL, and I think there have been a lot more points scored. And overall, if you look at the stats and the numbers, mm-hmm. fans are responding in a positive way. Right. I'm not saying when you ask them about roughing the passer penalties, whatever. I'm saying overall, the new rule changes, fans seem to be enjoying the games more. Right. I mean, last night's game, uh, Patriots Chiefs was a super entertaining game. No, it was. And I, I mean, you get these super entertaining players, but I would never want to, like, if I was a kid and I wanted to play football, you can miss me on trying to be a defensive player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds impossible, bro. Well, and and I guess that's my only thing about the because, dude, as a fan, like you'd be, I'd be lying if I was like, it is more exciting. Like I like to see touchdowns. That's that's what I yeah. like to see. Yeah. So and scoring and passing. And you don't like, like to see the star players injured for the season. Yeah. What does it mean to me if the defense played really well? Right. Who cares? Yeah. Like that's boring to watch. That's yeah. not exciting. No. For I, me. I mean, yeah. If if. If the Giants are on Monday Night Football and, and that's not taking anything away from the, da- from the defense, are, yeah. If Packers are on Monday Night Football, which they are tonight, right? Or when you guys are listening to this last night, if Rodgers isn't playing and Garoppolo's already out, what? That's one of the most uh, you right. wouldn't catch me tuning in, right? And that's so the, you need your stars. That, but that's the thing is, is uh, I do feel like you know. A, some people do like to watch that, like that are very into that type of stuff in the sport and everything that mm-hmm. you can't say nobody likes to watch that. But yeah, the bottom, it's but like the, bottom, the purists, though. Yeah, but it's, it, a very, it's a much more small percent. I, I like I compare it to like, you know, everybody asks for the uh, the like in studio of us making songs and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm like, OK, music purists that actually know what the hell is going Love on. Love that would actually really like that. But. The Joe total Schmo. numbers. Like if I go and s- to my wife and I'm like, "Hey, watch this in studio thing of us making this song," she would be bored out of her mind. Absolutely. But the people that that like it love it, right? So, exactly. Yeah, I, I I get that. I get so that. so it is a conundrum in that way. But at the same time, if the NFL is trying to appeal to the most people, which they are, right? Which business. they are. So they're going to try to make it more of an off- offensive, explosive game. Yeah. But at the same time, when you go more and more to that aspect. At what point is everyone is just going to throw football? up their hands and be like, dude, did you watch the game, uh, Patriots Chiefs? Yeah. So I don't know if you noticed there was a play um, that happened. It was one of the last, when, when Brady ran that one in, mm-hmm. The I don't know wh- who it was, but one of the linemen, I think, or a linebacker, had Brady sacked. And I think, but he was kind of like low on Brady. Yeah. Like below the waist. Yeah. And Brady was maybe pump faking a little up top, like trying to find a receiver. Yeah. And the guy kind of let him go because I think he thought Brady threw it. And he look at all these roughing the passer penalties and stuff we've had this year. He didn't want to be because it was like third and goal. He didn't want to be the guy that gets some stupid, you know, roughing the passer penalty and then they punch it in and whatever. He lets him go. Brady still had the ball and runs it in. Right. It's like damned if he damned if he does, damned if he doesn't, because if he makes the tackle thinking that right. Brady already threw the ball, right. he's the idiot that fucking got the roughing the passer penalty. Right. But look at what happened when he didn't. But it, that's it, that's what I keep thinking about like the uh the late hit calls and things like that, like on the sidelines of like these guys that go out of bounds, the whistle blows, and then immediately after that they get hit. Yeah. And it's like Okay, like sometimes that can be stopped, but yeah. other times it's like, dude, the guys are just trying to stop the damn play. Oh, and, and they're bro, in the middle of the play. And dude, the worst thing is like, okay, there's certain times where let's say a kick returner is is down the sideline, like he's veering toward the sideline, and he j- and he starts j- just kind of like slowing up and runs out of bounds, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and you can just tell that's what he's doing, right? Okay, then when he steps out and a guy hits him, I can understand. Even if it's like pretty, pretty bang, bang, yeah, yeah. as opposed to when he stepped out. But where the problem comes in is you get these quarterbacks who are super protected, right? Mm-hmm. Who decide to get those, they're running down the sideline and then they decide to get that extra two yards because no one wants to hit them yes. if they decide to step out. Yes. So they don't step out and they right. get two more yards yes. and then they get pushed out. Right. And it's like, if a quarterback's going to do that. I got to err on the side of hitting his ass when he's right here. Exactly. And so it makes it tough because, yeah, is the stuff when you hit him on the sideline, 
when they're out of bounds, is it egregious and, and is it unsafe and should it be taken out of the game? Yeah, but you can't have both. You can't have guys cheating that spirit of the rule by getting no. any any extra couple yards they can because these guys got to be so wary of hitting right. them. It just, to me, if the if the quarterback doesn't want to get injured, he shouldn't be fucking running. Yeah, I know, I know, I agree. Like it, a quarterback, if they want to be in the pocket, they protect him, whatever. But I will say, the one thing I I don't understand this year, I I, I can wrap my head around a lot of these protect the quarterback and protect the players, protect the offensive players rules. The whole like driving into the quarterback that when is he's on absurd. the ground. It's it's ridiculous, it's man. Absurd. And it's mainly because the times I've seen it called this year, like I don't I'm I'm sure there was some reason they they put this rule in. Like I know Rodgers got hurt like last year and yeah, it was yeah. kind of on a driving in but I, but, but, I get but it. it is football shit happens. That's what I'm saying. But the ones I've seen called this year, they literally just look like tackles. They are tackles. <laughs> like though. that that's the thing that I don't think that they fully thought about when they implemented this rule is I get why they did it. But you have to like analyze every single tackle that happens on the quarterback and yeah. realize that ninety percent of them are like that, bro. Ta- like the essence of tackling is is like when you finish the tackle, you are gonna come down on top of someone. And, and if it, you're three hundred pounds, it's and this quarterback is two hundred. It's about angles, though, too. Yeah, like know. you can't help the fact if you're if if I'm coming in on the quarterback, yeah. straight on, yeah. What is most likely going to happen, whether I'm trying or not trying to hit them down? Oh, I know. I know. I'm going to land on. I know. And if I'm at, and then you get all these. Oh, what a great escape by this quarterback! Well, no shit. This defender's got to tackle right. him in the perfect way. If you don't <laughs> line up your body with him, it makes it super yeah. hard to fucking do right. it. I could probably get out of the grasp of one of these three hundred pounders if they got to tackle me just right. perfectly the right way. Do you remember how they used to teach tackling too? It was better if you were like to align your body and then like go at. It well, because, that's the, well, because they they it's easier to do it. Dude, that that's way. what's so tough is it started with okay, don't go low on the quarterbacks. That's a penalty because of knee injuries. Right. Then it's like, okay, you can't touch their head because of all these concussion problems. Now we get to, oh, you can't drive into their chest. It's like, what can I do? So I'm supposed to <laughs> hug them. Right. Like, that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, it's, get, it's getting... To the side, not even from and the people, front. And people are saying, too, and this goes a little more toward defensive backs than necessarily... But it can, it, can, it can go to any defensive player, really, with trying to adjust to make these tackles the proper way. You end up being susceptible to injuring yourself trying yes. to like instead of just being like this guy's coming at me and I'm going to tackle him right you got to be like okay I got to do this yep. though like I got to hit him but then I can't drive into him so I got to avoid him and right. you end up doing something to your damn self because yeah. it's not a normal move yes but, but it, to me if if you know I'm a young person playing football is it even fun anymore not to be a defender that's a, you're literally taking the fun what was the fun the of being, fun in a, being defender? a defender was hitting yes and that was and the like, fun obviously certain playmaking but dude you're that's the thing bro you're a defensive lineman the only, like you have to just battle 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 yeah. battle 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 all game for your chance for your one or two chances yeah. to get that quarterback right now when you get him you got to you got to be super gentle <laughs> it's like come <laughs> on bro no i'm all about if like maybe i haven't even thought about this i'm just spitballing but like maybe make roughing the passer and stuff like that even it's already like 15 yards make it 20 make it 25 whatever but make it a legitimate roughing the passer yeah make it that they did hit him two seconds after he threw the ball and not like simultaneously right but drove into his chest yeah make it a true penalty but just penalize him more right Cause yeah, you're taking away a lot from the spirit of the game defensively. I I seriously wonder, like, 15 years from now, who the heck is even going to want to play defense? Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree. And plus, defensive players don't even get paid as much. Right, right. Like, <laughs> right. Who would want? To like, if I was a college, if I was a good college football player, yeah. I'd be like, I want to play offense, or I don't want to play. Yeah, well, because so many of these guys are athletes, like. You, they could go play something else. Yeah, you could you could try to get them to do something else. So yeah, no, I'm. You could I'm, go play basketball. Right, I'm with you there. Um, I don't really have a smooth way to transition, but the big topic of the week, Joel actually hit me up a couple of days ago. Um, and he sent like a little forum thing about uh the whole the shop too. 
Drake and LeBron. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't find a link to watch that whole thing. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. For some reason, it didn't show up on my HBO for a while, but I finally found it. And then I, but I, I had, I watched it once I finally found it. But I was like, oh, I've, I've already seen all this shit anyway. It's only, it's only a half hour, unless I missed something. It's only a half hour, and the first like. Five. I only saw like seven minutes of it. Okay, well, I guess this will just be my section then, and you can jump in when you want. But I think a lot of people have seen it or at least seen the clips floating around. Um, first of all, for those of you that don't know, I'm talking about LeBron does this series, The Shop, where he gets – athletes and other like rappers and stuff like that all in the barbershop and they just talk about random shit and this time he got drake Mm. um so i couldn't help but the first thought i had isn't even necessarily what like a lot of people are talking about and we'll get to that which is like the push of kanye shit Mm. but i couldn't help but think about content like this just sitting on the internet forever and how weird that is because like, don't get me wrong. I, I like that these guys are, these are two of the biggest stars in the world. Mm-hmm. Drake and LeBron James. Right. Like, you'd, you'd actually be hard-pressed to find two bigger stars. Right. But, so it's cool that they're willing to be, like, vulnerable enough to share personal insights and, and, and feelings with the world and put themselves out there like that. Um, but the thing that's weird to me is then, like, Drake's talking about his kid and stuff like that. Like he he literally said something along the lines of I, I didn't have the fairy tale with Rihanna, like, and he's basically ta- blatantly talking about this kid as you know a mistake, mm-hmm. but saying stuff like I don't want him to have any ill feelings toward his mother at all, but then he's basically talking how he doesn't really like the mother or he wishes it wasn't her it was somebody else and. It's just weird to me to think about that because at some point this kid is going to be old enough to comprehend this shit. He's going to see this shit. Yeah, yeah. And that's just a really weird, like I can only imagine when the kid's old enough to comprehend this, how that affects you. Like it's just very weird because even if they're not together, even whatever, and I, I I can't relate, my parents are together, but to think like this is mom and this is dad and this is this is dad talking about this situation when I came into the world it's not like Drake's out here bashing it. He's trying to say the right things, which is why I say I appreciate them being vulnerable and whatever. And he's having talks that you would expect to have a little bit behind closed doors though. Right. And he's just sharing it with the world. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just very weird to me. And it just shows how digital content and stuff like that can definitely have negative effects. If you use it in the wrong way, you got to balance like great entertaining con content for millions of people. And also really, really, negatively affecting people that are close to you. Like it's the same thing with just making music in general. You can write a really personal song that talks about specific situations and names specific people. And the masses love that shit. Right. But if you do that, sometimes you're hurting people around you that you actually care about in real life and it's not worth it. Right. So you, you definitely got to balance that out. I'm not saying they crossed any lines here. I'm not saying whatever just made me think about that. Well, um, it's a there's a lot of examples of that because we ha- it's one of those things that no one has really experienced yet. Because yeah, we're no gonna find out. No one's that's, young yeah, enough. That's the like, thing we so. can't we can't say like history has taught us. Like we're gonna find yeah. out. Here well, soon. and it's the same thing that we're going through now with just social media in general, as far as like how that's affecting people. Yeah, because no one really knows. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is you know so many people are are all about you know mental health and and all these things and it's like something like that that i i don't even think people think about it enough no like oh i'm just out here talking because that's what we do right you mean you have a weekly podcast like i make music and i put it out we put out tons of videos like you you have content and you share it with the world digitally it's on the internet and that's just that's kind of the world we live in yeah it is so a lot of you're not i'm not saying anyone has any bad motives or anything it's just kind of what you do but then there are repercussions to that shit down the road and we're going to see what some of that shit is. Like you even think about child stars, right? They right. always talk about how child stars were messed up um, just because of 
getting thrust yeah. into these situations that they never asked for. I think a lot of people forget that there's effects to every single choice that you have in life. Yeah. So it is, and not all of it is positive. Like, yeah, the thing is like, you could be making a mistake. Like you could be making something, you could be choosing something that will affect your life in a negative way and think that it is the most positive thing in the world yeah. at the time that you're doing it. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily has to have to be heinous or anything like that. It could seem very, very innocent. Yeah. But you just don't know. Yeah. It could be like 40 years down the road and that had an effect on it, but you won't know. Yeah. And you might not even equate it to that. I, and I guess that's, that's, if something rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, cause like I said, I'm not, I'm not taking the stance here of like Drake really crossed the line and shouldn't be talking. I'm not, I'm not going there. It just made me think about it. But if, if, if something did rub me a little the wrong way, it was, it's the fact that, Drake is out here saying the words, I don't want my kid to have a bad relationship with his mom. Like, it's never like that. Like, I would never blah, blah, blah. But he's pretty much through his album and through stuff like this, publicly making it very clear to everyone that this woman is not the one. Yeah. And I'm not even saying not the one in the fact of, like, not the person I want to marry. Just, I think, any because everyone knows Drake and no one knows this woman, right? Right. And I think through what we've seen from Drake... Are you, are you like, you, you, if you had to choose, do I have positive or negative feelings toward this woman? It's kind of negative. Yeah. But yet you're out here saying, I don't want my kid to have any negative feelings toward my, I don't know. And I don't know the details of their relationship. Maybe she deserves certain negative feelings. Maybe, maybe she, she did try to like extort him. Who knows? So I'm, that's why I say I'm not getting in. It just makes you but, think, but the thing it just is, gives you a little kind of a weird feeling. A simplified dumbed down version of that though, which you kind of need to do when you're talking about a kid is yeah. Us as adults and even like teenagers and stuff like that can connect the dots of this. This issue is, is a lot deeper than like just what the kid should feel and stuff like that. Yeah. Like we all can understand that. But as a kid, even growing up to be an adult, knowing who his parents are, the developmental stage of that is devastating because they don't get it. Right. Like it depends on when they actually find out about this dynamic, when like, because the thing is, you don't know how they're going to like interpret yeah. that. Well, yeah, that's so, the thing. How we interpret it today, how we interpret Drake talking about this shit today, not only is it going to be totally different when you are the kid, right. but it's also going to be different 13, 12 years down the road. Look how much shit has changed 13 years ago. Like yeah, digesting stuff on YouTube no, I and know. things like that and how important different things right. are. Like Not the same thing, but it just made me think. I, I watched... Uh, Almost famous with Glow the other day, and I had never seen it. I don't have you ever seen it, mm -mm. but um, really good movie. It's an older movie, but it, it, we were just laughing and, and kind of thinking about how it's this kid goes on the road with a band, and he's like a 15 year old kid that's writing for Rolling Stone. Mm. But like him writing the a Rolling Stone article about this band was like the biggest thing, and it was super important to the band. Mm -hmm. And they had, like they were gonna be the cover story, mm -hmm. and it was I like I have seen this that, is gonna actually. this is gonna like make or break them. Like it's such a huge deal. Yeah, it's like a magazine article. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. And so that wasn't that long ago though. Right. And now you look at how are things gonna change going forward. Drake is your dad. Yeah. Certain things Drake is gonna do, and and how he's in the news and whatever now, are gonna be interpreted in a whole different way. 13 years down the road. I, I think, and I think we just don't know. And, and we don't. And I think it's, I think it's a really hard thing for adults to like understand and get. And I don't think anyone really understands it anyway, is you can't like things aren't as, as like simple. Like we, we can, we can formulate certain opinions and understand things on a deeper level than a kid. Mm -hmm. So, it's hard for us to get into the mind of a child. Like we can remember when we were kids, but we don't really remember how we, we were thought. feeling. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we, we can't relate to that anymore. Yeah. We have no idea. So that's the biggest thing. Like, I, I think that a lot of adults forget is that like, just because you can logically walk yourself through something doesn't mean. Right. And, and the thing is too, like, I think a lot of adults are like, Oh, they'll understand when, when, you know, they're older and stuff. Mm. Well, not really, because 
they're formulating their opinion all the way up until they're older. Yeah. So what they formulated in their younger years are coming out when they're older. Yeah. Yes, they'll understand certain aspects, but that's what fucks up kids is that like thing that they keep growing up with of this negative, whether or not it's right or wrong, this negative thing about one of their parents or something like that, yeah. that just manifests into something that's not good yeah. when they're older. And like I said, you know, Drake's saying a lot of the right things. It's just me. Like there's a certain vibe when you're kind of talking out of both sides of your mouth a little bit. And, but like I said, it's a very real conversation. Like he's being real and we yeah. want people to be real. So I'm not, it's cool for me as a fan to see that realness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's, yeah, it's as, an interesting thing to think about. That, that's the thing as an adult and a fan, like that's a cool thing to like hear. Like it, it's cool to hear the inside yeah. scoop on a lot of things. And he's saying things that you would be talking with your friends about. Yeah, like yeah. it's not, it's not that's for the thing. show. An it's, adult to adult conversation. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with what he's saying. Right. Like some kids out here are mistakes. It doesn't mean they're loved any less. Right. It doesn't we're, mean we're all not fooled. Not by everyone that. is we, not we everyone. Yeah. Like not everyone had a kid with the person they're going to marry or the person right. that they love. It, like it just shit happens. Right. It's just weird for it to be happening so publicly when you think about it. Well, like, and the effect that has on a kid. No, I don't think anyone really yeah. gets yeah. No, no one can really on. I think it's hilarious that like even like I have a niece and like we have like these college and then into adult years. We have like 10 plus years. A lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people have 10 plus years of not really being around kids all that often, like yeah. growing up and stuff and becoming an adult. And you almost forget like what it means to have a kid around all the time. Yeah. And then when you're thrown back into that, when all your friends and stuff start having kids yeah. and it's super weird because you're like, whoa, this is like not even something that I'm used to having around and stuff like that. And you don't, you, you forget like how naive and like crazy they are and have no idea how the world works and everything like that. You're so used to just interacting with adults all the time that yeah. it does become a weird dynamic when you have a kid. I think yeah. it's kind of hilarious that, that like I'm around my friends and like, you know, uh, family's kids. And I'm like, geez, I like forget how like naive and silly and stupid and like weird they are that it's yeah. like because I just it, I, it's been so long since I've had to be a, around one for a long period yeah, of no. time. Yeah. Like, yeah, family gatherings and stuff like that. And you're around them for like three hours and you say bye. Right. But like when you see them on a day to day basis and you can see them grow and stuff, it's like holy shit yeah it's different yeah it's an interesting thing to think about because you i mean rarely do you have two just mega stars in a room like that talking about personal shit so but yeah the main topic of this this shit that's going around the internet and stuff is all the light being shed on the drake kanye push a situation um i guess a few things that hit me about that and i'm just gonna talk basically like like you guys kind of have heard it already because i know a lot of people have if you haven't, it's only like a half hour episode, I think. Um, but I guess first off, we were all right when we heard Duppy Freestyle and we were like, it seems like Drake has way more of a problem with Kanye than he does with Pusha. That mm. was basically confirmed. Yeah, I think I saw this part. It was like seven and a half minutes. Yeah. So to, to, to me, the lift yourself situation is actually pretty fucking funny. Yeah. Apparently Drake... Gets that beat from Kanye. Like, it was supposed to be for Drake. And it was actually the only thing that Drake got out of their sessions together because the rest of it, Drake was basically helping Kanye. Mm -hmm. Drake tells Kanye his release date, which was like June 15th. Tells him about his, his son, even sends him a pic. Kanye supposedly wasn't even thinking about dropping a project or anything till like fall or winter time. Then all of a sudden Kanye announces all these seven track project dates from his artists and gets to work on dropping these all around Drake's day. <laughs> <laughs> and the funniest shit is that lift yourself, which again was the only thing Drake got from Kanye, this beat, which was actually a fire beat. Right. <laughs> he ended up just dropping out of nowhere with the poopity scoop <laughs> shit. <laughs> so imagine being Drake and being like, I got this beat from And Kanye. Drake was super excited yeah, about the beat. It's a dope, it's a dope beat. And he's right. like, okay, I got this beat. It, it's I'm a little disappointed. It's all I got from our sessions, but I got this. 
whatever, right? Right. He really then, liked the beat. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you hear, oh, Kanye dropped a song. <laughs> and it's I think it was actually called Lift Yourself. Yeah. Which auto- automatically, you're like, wow, he used the fucking beat he gave me. Mm. What a fucking jackass. And then you listen to it, and it's that. And he, you yeah. like. That's that, all he did over it. That's fucking hilarious to me. Like that's super savage. It's as a third party. If I'm Drake, I'm obviously like fuck this dude. Right. I'm out. Like no more friendship with this dude. He's a snake. He like he's he'll just do anything for attention. He's just that type of dude. Whatever. Right. Which is what Drake did. Basically, he says. Yeah. He was like fuck this. Like this guy's just trolling me and shit. Right. Then obviously Drake hears the push a diss on Daytona, mm-hmm. which is basically talking a lot about ghostwriting, mm. dissing Drake in that way, which from Drake's perspective, he's like, dude, I was just in the studio a bunch with Kanye who produced this push a track and is, mm. you know, push his partner in crime over there at good music. Right. And I'm ghostwriting all day for this motherfucker. I'm not going to stand for getting dissed about ghostwriting. Right. From this crew. Right. So he does Duppy. And then Kanye apparently gives Push all the ammo for his response because yeah. Drake had to know that that's the only way Push could have gotten it. Yeah. Which we all kind of suspected, but this just confirms it. Right. And Kanye basically comes out looking like a huge snake, as it seems he rightfully should. Right. And I believe it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I believe that 100%. So I guess one of the big things in this is Drake got to a point where he said, in the shop interview, there are rules to beef and battling. And he thinks the line's about 40 cross the line. Mm -hmm. So glow hit me up this morning and and brought this up. I guess she was listening to breakfast club and and they were talking about, are there rules and, and hip hop beef because of this and shit. And she was like, you should talk about it on the podcast. And I thought it was interesting because you and I kind of talked about this a little more indirectly when it actually was going on. Right. Um, I guess here's a little here's a little clip I found. I don't know if this is what she was talking about on the Breakfast Club, Breakfast Club, but Charlemagne kind of is is talking about this. Don't let anything distract you from the fact that Pusha T defeated the Almighty Drake in a rap battle earlier this year. Okay, I don't want to hear about any hypothetical atomic beige bombs from Drake. Drake, just take the L gracefully and stop trying to save face. Just say he pulled a hell of a chess move on you and leave it at that. And you know why it's BS? Because Drake says he wasn't willing to take it there and rap, but you still want Pusha T to get punched in the face? Either you want to give Pusha energy or you don't, because if you want him to get punched in the face, that's still giving him a lot of energy, I don't think, y'all think? I think that energy was going to go mostly to Kanye West, and he didn't want to put that out there. But, you know, he could feel the way. He could feel like he still wants to push, punch Pusha T in the face. Now, but, Pusha but T... But it defeats the purpose of him saying, I don't want to take it there and rap. You don't want to take it there in a song, but you're willing to get him punched in the face in the street. Because I think that song on, was going to go more towards Kanye and less towards What's Pusha worse, T. a punch in the face or a song? Now, Pusha a song if it's done right like i guess that's where i, I kind of disagree a lot with charlemagne's take there cuz cuz drake said i don't it, since you didn't hear it i don't think when the when he brought up the 40 situation drake said that no i heard it okay like that type of energy is just the type that's going to yeah, get yeah. you punched in the face and shit yeah I, I think charlemagne's taking that completely wrong like i agree with drake there if drake goes and crafts a song that's and like envy said it's probably going to be more directed at Kanye than Pusha even. Yeah. And he's probably going to say some shit. Right. That he can't take back. That is probably fucking up relationships and shit like that. Yeah. So would a punch do more damage than a song? No. No. Would would Drake's reputation and Drake's whatever whole situation be as fucked up? Not that it's fucked up, but would it be as messed up if Drake would have gotten punched in the face as opposed to Pusha doing the, all the disses. Drake would have been better off being punched in the face. I yeah, it's, I I don't get the... Even though he came through... I don't know how clean. you compare those. Yeah, it's just... I just disagree with if, that if whole... The song, right, but if the song's done, yeah, done right. Right, I just disagree with if that whole... If what you think is in the song is actually in all, the song. All Drake's saying is like the idea behind... That's the type of shit that gets you punched in the face, not the type of shit you just verbally spar about. And that and that's where I think Charlemagne's missing the boat there. It's like it, you don't equate the two. It's not it's not even like which one is worse. It's just it's it's apples and oranges type shit. Yeah, I don't I don't even think you can like you talk the you basically because... talk about my friend dying. I'm he's Drake saying I'm not the guy that's like, "Oh, let me verbally 
like you're, you're let, comparing, me spar, let me spar with you in a rap about that. He's saying that's the type of shit that you get punched in the face. You're comparing physical damage to emotional damage, right? Which you can't really do. But I don't know what whatever. That's that's not even the main point. I guess Glow was saying um, that they they were kind of bringing up as far as are there rules and stuff, and Drake saying that. But then you know Drake and that whatever I can't was it the Two Birds song um, talking about Cuddy and his like mental situation. And like he mentioned Push's fiance and his duppy um freestyle. I personally would argue Push's shit about 40 pushed the limits way more than those two things. Mm-hmm. But then again, everybody has different lines. So I can't just say mine are like if certain things affect me more than others. But I, this is why it's funny is I said this same shit when the battle was going on, and it makes even more sense now. Drake says a lot of stuff. He just often says it subliminally, which makes it more tasteful and palatable. But he also is really good at making shit clever and entertaining, which for me makes it art. Mm. Pusha just coming out and saying this shit in mostly unclever ways, which I specifically talked about with the whole 40 thing. You remember that? Yeah. I was like, he's basically just saying your friend's dying. Mm -hmm. I just thought like, I don't know. It didn't do a lot for me as a fan of rap. It was just like, it was like Pusha writing a, a TMZ expose. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. And when we talked about this a while back, I, like I was saying what Drake was saying, hell of a chess move. I didn't say that specifically, but I said you can't deny the moment and the situation it put Drake in. No matter what he does, he's either going to have a chink in his armor from like rap fans who are expecting a battle. Right. Because if Drake doesn't respond, you automatically lose that shit. Like you have one, you have two options. Don't respond and permanent chink in your armor from hip hop purists because you lose that battle. Right. Or two, respond. You either don't go for the kill and you lose the battle, which is even worse than not responding. Right. Or you respond and hit harder than push a hit. And I knew Drake could hit harder than push a hit because pushes was very effective from that whole TMZ perspective. Right. But as a fan of rap and just clever wittiness and, and, and a song, I, I didn't think it was that tight. Right. So I wanted Drake to respond because I knew he could. Mm. But the reality is Drake's a megastar. Like the percentage of Drake fans that look at Drake differently because he didn't respond to Pusha is so small. It's just like not worth it to him. And from a human perspective, I have to agree with Drake. It's easy for us to look at these guys as like characters and superstars, but Drake would have to get dirty to win that beef. Right. Which And he, it doesn't which, behoove him to. Which I think he could have though. He could like, have though, I but I don't Drake, think like I don't think it's good for his career to do that. Right. He knew it was it, and not only his career, because I think that was a focus like at the time of what is it what does it do for Drake's business and career and stuff. But when I watched the shop interview, I I even had to think more and realize like from a human perspective, it's not something he wanted to do like for himself and his legacy and who he is as a person and an artist. You know what I mean? That's what that's what I'm talking about though, is to me Like, yeah, would it affect the business on the back end and stuff? Yeah, because you have this image, whatever. But I'm saying aside from image. No, what I mean by career, though, is like his career, his legacy, like his like Drake is beyond hip hop now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like beefs make sense for somebody like Pusha T and like Eminem and stuff like that. Like it's way more in their lane. It's way more in their lane. Like Drake has surpassed that lane. He is way larger than that lane now. Mm -hmm. Way larger. Yeah. So what the hell, do, what good does it do for Drake to stoop down to that level? Okay. So it gets the hip hop purists on his side. Well, he turns off a whole bunch of other people on this other side that are probably but that, amounting that's, to way bigger. That's what I'm saying though. I agree with that, but I think it's, it's more than that. It's not just, Oh, well, am I getting these fans and are these people? Am I, am I this? Am I that? I'm saying he's a human and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. to like be out here talking about like whatever he was going to talk about. Right. It's it's straight. It it would be like pushes shit, like straight TMZ expose shit. Right now, these are my opinions for the overall question of are there rules in rap beef? And I think we're saying lyrically because I think we can all agree there are rules as if it goes beyond the music. Are there rules lyrically? I would say technically no. To me, 
it's up to the fans to be responsible enough to digest the right stuff and prop up the right stuff. Same goes with just music in general. Like, and who we make popular and what songs we make popular. Is there technically a rule that you can't just straight up lie in your raps? No, there's not a rule that says that. Right. Would I do it? No. But you know what? That shit is winning and being successful right now. So why wouldn't artists do it? Well, that's so, And to me, same goes with beef. If you're asking me, uh, do, would I have principles? Do I think there should be certain principles and lines in rap beef? Yeah. I would say the same thing about music. Right. But if someone's going to get super grimy because people love that shit, how can you say, no, 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 that's off limits, but I'm going to eat it up though. Yeah. It's, it's up to the audience if it's off limits. And that's the whole point of, of, of beef. I think like, does that make sense? No, I, I, it's, it's, it's a, it's a product of the times. I think is what it is, is yeah. Like right. Even right now in, in the music industry, like fake shit is, is winning. And like, that is nobody's fault, but the fans like that's, that's yeah. literally like you, the thing is, it's all about sales. It's all about streaming numbers. Right. So if it's getting streamed, right. it's winning. And that's why you can't be like, as someone I've, I've expressed, there's a lot of the lills and stuff that I'm not, I'm not a fan of right. musically right now. I will never disrespect their hustle. No, because they're they're more successful than I am. But you, that's the thing. You can't sit here and be like, that's not winning. Cause it is yeah. like, that's what it is. But we can't sit here as, as fans of hip hop, like as a whole and be like, yeah, I mean, that shit, like as a whole, that shit isn't for like, we don't believe as a, as a hip hop community that that right. shit's real. Ex like, yes, you yes, do. Yes, you do. Yes. It, that you said that you said that perfectly. Cause that's my point. Like there's two different things. There's the hip hop community. Are there rules to this shit? No, we've proven that there's not because we eat that shit up. Right. But if you're asking like my personal beliefs and thoughts on the matter, right. yeah. Like, there's there's like, too dude, many. I, I, you can go back to the podcast. We were talking about this beef. Like I thought the, the lines about 40, I expressed that I thought they were super whack. Yeah. And it tainted pushes this to me at the same time. Because basically, Pusha, he's talking about someone with a disease, and he was basically, dude, I swear, he was basically being like, he's sick, he's going to die. Right. And I was like, okay. Now, people would say this is pushing the limits, and some people would say this is still wrong, but at the time, I said this at the time, and I still believe it now. If he flipped the 40 situation into a clever, bar-worthy, witty way of saying something about what does 40 situation mean to Drake. for Drake? Yes. As in, you're not shit without 40. Right. Which he did not say. Right. <laughs> in hip hop, I I would be, if, if, if it hit me and I was like, that was clever and damn, I would be like, that's not off limits. So yeah. that's why I say shit like that isn't off limits. Right. Is it, can you say it's distasteful? Can you whatever? So much of it has to do with how it's done to me. Right. And so that's the thing. But, but the, a lot but of time I is, hear Drake songs and Drake bars and Drake whatever, and they're clever right. and they're witty. So if he says something that someone might think is like, if you just say he came at Cuddy's mental health, there was, I can't remember that exact line, but it was a, it was clever. Yeah. It's, it's like what any good businessman says, the market decides yeah. like that's what it is. So how, you know, something is off limits is when it comes out and no one's fucking with it. Like that's what's off limits. <laughs> like yeah. that's what it is. This is still entertainment. Like it's not. Let's not act like this is something more than that. Like it is. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. It, it exactly. So yeah, I mean, I don't. I by definition, nothing is off limits. Right. But it's the fans and the market that decides if that right. shit comes out and they're like, nah, right. that shit was whack. And I, that shit is off limits. Then it's fucking right. off limits. Where I do agree with Drake is I do agree that. Uh, shit comes back around like energy gets reciprocated to you. So if you are the guy that steps over the line every fucking time yes. and pushes the line just for clicks and, right. and, and attention, I do like, like if you ask me to, does push deserve to be punched in the face for saying that shit? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Like I'm not, I wouldn't be out here being like your friend's fucking sick. <laughs> He's going to die. Right. 
That's shitty energy to put right. out in the world. Now, if I knew, like, if I knew your friend was sick and he was like your right hand man and did so much shit for you and I was beefing with you, mm -hmm. would I be afraid to drop a line about like what's going to happen when he's not here? Mm -hmm. I think you can do that in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Now in the general world talking about that shit, it's all distasteful, but we're talking about rap. It's different. Like you wouldn't just go up to someone on the street and be like, what's going to happen when you, <laughs> No, but we're talking I, about a rap battle. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's also entertainment and art. So right. like, it, you know, it's what not you're, like, stepping in. you're not a murderer for reading a, a book about a murder. Right. Like, and, and by not... the way, and by the way, you got to know what you're getting into. Pushes shit against Drake on his album. Infrared mm. was pretty low key. We're right. talking about ghostwriting and whatever. Right. Drake could have let it go and moved on, and I bet you this shit never would have happened. Right. Drake wanted to respond. Right. He stepped into the ring with him. You don't know who you're getting into the ring with. Right. So if he can cross the line, like if you want to just stay in your own bubble and make your music and blah, 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 and have little people, like little jabs coming at you and not respond, he might have been able to do that. I can't say for sure Pusha would have never said anything, but he might not have. But Drake decided to step in the ring, so you open yourself up to somebody no, you else. Do. You, you do. open yourself up to somebody else's yeah. principles at that point. Yeah, exactly. I, I that's that's why I say though, like there, I don't I don't think you can really say that there are rules. I I think Drake is wrong by that because the bottom line is, it's 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 you're who are you doing this for? Yeah. Like, well, and it's a lot of like beef and hip hop. It's a lot of one one upsmanship. So it's like like I say. It would be even more foul if Pusha just on his album just had this track, had the story of Adonan or whatever right. track on his album, right. like not like completely unprovoked. Right. He had a little diss. Right. Drake went back at him and one upped him. Right. And then Push was like, I'm going to fucking go away. Yeah. Okay. Right. Like, and I'm not, I'm, I'm sitting here saying, I thought a lot of Pusha shit was whack too. Right. But. You you have to understand the the science right. behind it, and and the thing is like if if you were concerned about okay as human beings I can't do this specific thing or whatever or like this beef is getting out of hand or whatever, that's the point where what Drake did you don't respond or you do what a human would do and you like yeah. pick up the phone or yeah. message somebody or yeah. whatever yeah so it's by, got two different realms by, right by yeah. acting like oh this got out of control like who the like. You're releasing this to the world. Yes. Like by essence of all this stuff, you're technically out of control yeah, already. You, you can't straight up judge it based off of a typical human interaction. Right. You know what I mean? It's because it's not. Exactly. It's not. Exactly. <laughs> it's a song that's released to the world. Like you can't really call that a normal human reaction yeah, or a normal it, yeah, human action. It, yeah. If your response is another song released to the whole world, then right. you, you know, yeah. and you're, you're doing this not to like get back. You're all, you're doing it to get back at the person, but you're, what, you're, what are you also doing it for? Yeah. Publicity. Right. Yeah. And you both, you both get it. So. Right. You both get it. Yeah. But no, I mean, overall interesting, definitely an interesting, like a lot of times you can get two superstars in a room like that and just hear a lot of like blah mm -hmm. and kind of like what the first five minutes of it was when they had the different, like the athletes in there, like Victor Oladipo and Mo Bamba and shit. No, I don't see that. They, like it was at least what I saw. And I think this was the episode. I could be wrong. Cause I just watched it this morning quickly, but what I found was just a 30 minute episode. The first five minutes was talking to like, Mo Bamba and Victor Oladipo and a couple other people. And then Drake comes in and it's just them. <laughs> it was like, I don't even know why you included these other people. You should have just done an episode with Drake, right. <laughs> but whatever. Um, and Drake comes in for like 25 minutes, whatever, and talks about it. But it's cool that they actually gave insight and talked about shit that people were interested in hearing about instead of just coming up with their own, how do you deal with yeah, the yeah, fame yeah. type shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that was cool. And I do got to say, man, for I put too much energy into expressing things I don't like about LeBron. Because I always say, I'm not a LeBron hater. Mm. I'm not. Best player in the world. Possibly best ever. Mm -hmm. And he does little things that annoy me. But overall, LeBron is a great person. And like as far as a superstar could go in this day and age, yeah. like you can't really ask for much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's got their little flaws, but that guy's... He's he's pretty good. Right. Well, when, in the entertainment world, you kind of have to take the two separate worlds of... It's like what we say with Kanye every time. Like, liked his music, 
don't like the person. Yeah. Like, <laughs> kind of, dude, what a weird. It's like, oh, man. but, but it's, it is like, it's weird in the entertainment area, era, area, because like you could watch a basketball game and be like, wow, I hate how this guy is acting on the court. Right. But then off the court, you could be like, oh, this dude is an awesome dude. Yeah. Like, right. it is two different yes. worlds. You can have two different opinions. For sure. I'm sure Pusha T's a super nice guy. Really. Yeah. I mean, whatever. What does Jake say on the line? He says something about that. You're an approachable dude or something like that. I don't know, but I listened to Dom Kennedy's album. I don't even know he released one. Yeah, nobody did. <laughs> I haven't listened to Dom Kennedy in a while. Was it bad? Didn't really do anything for me. Which I what is to. what is his situation now? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like deep dive into it. I was just like, God, I used to be such a big fan of Dom. Like he was summertime music back in its, like 2012. At, yeah, summertime music at its finest, mm -hmm. at its finest. And I just keep, I'll, I'll probably always keep listening to his projects just in the hopes that that shit comes back. But it's just, I don't know, because it's like he always had a very unique style of rapping that you like. A, uh, he's not a rapper's rapper. No, he's the opposite. But he really, whatever it was, however he flowed over his beats and picked his beats and and whatever he did was right for summertime and i don't know for some reason it's just been a little off for me like the rapping actually that rapping that i knew wasn't good rapping before but worked mm -hmm. feels like bad rapping now yeah probably because the beat selection isn't right Could be, but yeah i, I didn't want to like go into it i, I think that like, that stuff shows through more when the beat selection isn't right yeah could be because the artist can like it, it's in a more obvious way that they're not flowing over the beat right and yeah. so it kind of like because that's the thing that is what dom was good at is like his beat matched the or his voice matched the beat yeah and he could flow over it in a way that you didn't mind that he was rapping about nothing right but if that isn't perfect that's gonna yeah. that's gonna shine through yeah yeah oh i'll still listen <laughs> <laughs> in the hopes that it comes back nba kicks off tonight aka Tomorrow, a.k.a. tonight, Tuesday night. Wow. I don't care. I'm one of the few people in my circle that gives a fuck. <laughs> Everyone's an NBA hater. Yeah, I don't care at all. Ugh. Philly Boston is the first game. That's going to be a sick game. All I got to say is the NFL is lucky that they have fantasy football or else. I oh, that's a fact. Two fucks about that, too. That's a fact. I got Golden State winning it all. I'd be stupid to not. Boston's going to be good this year. I think it's going to be Golden State, Boston. Um, a lot of people are liking Toronto. I like Philly more than Toronto. Um, and I think the Lakers are going to be really good. I think the LeBron factor is is a serious thing. I mean, yeah. I I don't know why. How like he could like they that. could legitimately play Golden State in the Western Conference Finals to me, which some people think is absurd, but I mean, Houston was really good last year. They lost a couple like less important pieces and they got Carmelo. So Houston's going to be good. Thunder are going to be good, but those are the four teams in the West to me. Like the East is kind of up for grabs, but Boston seems to be the class. The East is probably the strongest it's been in a while. Boston, Philly, Toronto, the Bucks will be good. Pacers will be pretty good. The East is the best it's been in a while, but I'm thinking Golden State over Boston, which I think most people are thinking. So, uh, getting off this NBA topic. <laughs> Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, what? Uh, <clears throat> so, after like... I'm undefeated, never lost. That's my NBA drop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, after like two years of us being uh, on the mailing list to get on SoundCloud Premiere, we have finally been accepted. Which, which means that we can monetize all of our songs you by ourselves. Shit. But I tested it out the other day, <laughs> which is why uh, we kept getting uh, Twitter notifications from our fans being like, why are certain Sound songs issues. A bit unavailable? Get how whack this is. Like, why can't they do this like YouTube where I mark something as wanting it to be monetized? has to go through a review system, which YouTube does, but they take it down. 
when it goes Go, through the seriously? review. Yeah. What? So all the songs that I marked as I want mon- monetized got taken down, marked as private, and I you can't make them pub- public what? until they get approved or you take monetization off. What? So as of right now, I have none of our songs monetized because I was like, I don't want to take, take them, them down. down. Yeah, and I and they don't give you a time frame on when they're gonna so had, be did reviewed. You, did you maybe like try it with one? Maybe that's the way I was. I was thinking about doing that, but I'm not sure. I'm I'm trying to s- strategically choose one that is going to go unnoticed. Yeah. That. Um. But yeah, I was. I was like super because I figured it would be exact. It works exactly like YouTube, pretty much. Yeah. It's a little bit annoying because you have to pick what country each that you want it monetized in. But it's pretty much like YouTube. But all of a sudden, I started getting a couple notifications from people, and they were like, "Why are these songs off?" And it was the ones that I had monetized. And yeah, that's why. And it had been like three hours, and nobody had reviewed them or anything. So I'm like, "This is fucking stupid. Why would you do that?" Yeah, that's dumb. Why can't you leave the song up and review them and then mark it as monetized? It makes no sense. Yeah, I don't get that. Whatever. So, yeah, just another reason why SoundCloud is really missing the boat on this whole streaming wars thing. Yeah. That's all I got, Mo. Word. Oh, I... uh, Did you do any more uh, research on the Spotify upload button? It's live now for certain people. No, not at all. What I figured out is um, they do have like a few days review process. So you can't just click upload and it'll go up that same time, you know, like immediately, like you could like on SoundCloud. Yeah. But potentially, yeah, I I think it's like a two day review process to make sure that you aren't breaking any copyright laws or whatever. And then you can put it up yourself I mean, and you get paid for it. That's dope. And I think from what I read, you get paid more because you're not involving a distributor. Really? So it makes it easier on Spotify's end wow. to pay you out. That's dope. So the only downside I could really see from that is not having anyone on your behalf to contact Spotify for issues. Right. You know, if you know how, how many times we run into like a song right. being placed on the wrong artist page or something and we tell our distributor. But technically, 50%. Well, actually, of, a lot of times we go through Spotify. 50% yeah, yeah. of the time, no, Spotify yeah. is solving it anyway. That's true. That's true. So, wow. well, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know pretty, how much, but it sounds like it, it is a decent amount more than. That's a pretty major thing. Because I don't have to involve a middleman. So, wow. it makes the process easy for them. But yeah, I'm hoping like that goes live pretty soon so we can test that out because that'd be yeah. pretty sweet. But, oh, yeah. Word. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. We're sticking to this Tuesday thing, guys. So you can expect the pod every Tuesday morning from here till the end of time. Yep. Um, yeah, let's uh outro to your upcoming song. Let's give, do it. Give him a little snippet, Billy Hoyle. Next I'm week, undefeated. never lost. Next week, right? Next week, a week from. So the song that we started with was a Powell song coming this Thursday. Mm -hmm. And this one is Packy's song, Billy Hoyle, coming next Monday. Monday, I believe. Right? I'm pretty sure Monday. Yeah. Word. (laughs) Until next week. Still don't know me Young risk taker Hit maker True sayer Y'all brick layers Y'all haters Y'all creative players I put my 10,000 in And got my talent up Put my money down I'm taking all challengers Billy Hoyle Fuck looking fresh Lay it on the line Put my shot up in this way